All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today I'm going to do a little video on planning out your individual periods and then how those fit in based on what, you, what else you have going on in your practice plan and how you should kind of change your drills every day and things that you're doing uh, based on what else is going on in the practice plan. Make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, sideline replay company we use here at Bishop Kenny High School. I've used them for about the last five or six years. Highly reliable, highly affordable, great customer service. Dome Hats, a headwear company we use with... Play fast football and at Bishop Kenny High School. Uh, all of our hats are through Dome Hats. If you're looking for completely customizable, check them out. They have an amazing online hat builder. You get on there, design your own hat, uh, the style of hat you want. Panels can be different colors, your logo, any embroidery you want. Change uh, the enclosures on the back, snapback, fit it, Velcro. Every hat has a story. Make sure you let Dome help you tell yours. Baker Sporting Goods, company we use for our coaches' practice gear, our coaches' sideline. Game gear, our spirit packs are through them, our uniforms are distributed through them. They also are now, excuse me, in the uh, shoulder pad world, pro gear. They're distributing some of that, uh, some of the pro gear equipment, so make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play, which is the playbook software we use. We use it for a lot of our installs, a lot of our team meetings. We use their presentation mode. Uh, I use it as my drawing tool, not only for my playbook, for, but for my Patreon site. Anytime I'm going to speak at a clinic, I'm always going to use their play drawing tool and their presentation mode so check out just play all right different usa the ultimate striking machine you get thousands of reps don't need a partner you set them up right on your squat racks in your weight room you can also um, design ways to set them up out on the football field so you could have them some on the football field some in the weight room they are perfect for in season and off season striking development if you want to learn to strike violently you have to practice striking violently eliminate another player eliminate holding a bag it's just you and the difference usa striking machine all right and then x and o notebook which is a company that makes completely customizable notebooks so we put a lot of time and effort into our meetings how we're going to run our meetings the maybe the huddle clips or the just play clips or things that we're going to show in our 20 minute 20 minute meeting with our players why not have a way for your players to get more out of the meetings by being able to take notes, write things down. Your coaches in game plans, right? They come in and maybe they have a random legal pad or something else that they're taking notes on for the game plan. Why not have one notebook customizable, your logo, you can put the schedule on the back, a picture of your stadium, whatever you want. Inside, you've got completely customizable templates, drawer on them, places to write notes. Now you can have your coaches have all your game plans in one customizable notebook. So check out X and O Notebook. So, you know, a lot of times in in coaching football we look at individual periods and maybe we have the same standard drills that we do or we look at the 10 or 15 minute blocks that we have and we kind of say all right these are the things that we need to do but i think what you really should be doing with your indie periods uh and depending on how you practice so we have time before practice uh in between meetings and and when we actually start flex and we have time uh where we can go over some things with our players we can use that for edds or everyday drills if we wanted to um, it's pre-practice and we haven't flexed yet, so I usually use that as some type of teaching period um, where maybe it's, it's a route distribution deal or maybe it's reads or something that we're going on that we can teach. But I've got that time before um, practice starts, and then I've got my indie time that's on the schedule. All right, And then based on what else is going on around that, what other periods we have, that's where I'm going to determine what I'm going to do in my indie. Right? So what I've got drawn up on the board here or listed up on the board is Yesterday's first day, day one, Indy with the safeties, right? So I'm coaching uh, our two, our three safety spots. So I'm coaching the two high safeties and I'm coaching the middle safety. So we had tackling circuits at the beginning of our practice. So I know that they're going to get their tackling reps in their tackling circuits, right? So we're day one, all right? We're non-body on body contact. So all the drills that we are doing are technique and form drills, all right? And we are an Atavis tackling team. So we're doing all the drills that Atavis recommends to us and we're following that schedule. So I know that they're gonna get their technique, form, positioning, uh, work for tackling in the tackling circuit, right? So that's one thing that I can take away from my indie period. I don't have to worry about doing anything tackling-wise in my indie period. There's one thing we do from a tracking standpoint in our indie period, all right, that I'll, that I'll talk to you a little bit about. But as far as, you know, any other tackling drills, on days where I have a tackling circuit, I don't need to hit on that. Now, if there's a day where we don't have a tackling circuit, well, then somewhere in my indie, I may do five minutes of tackling with my guys. Maybe it's five minutes of roll tackles or, uh, you know, negative leverage tackles that we're working on, um, you know, on, on a tackling donut, or maybe it's a one-man sled drill. 
if I don't have tackling circuits, I'm going to build that into my individual periods, right? Well, on a day where I know that I have three tackling circuits that they're going to rotate through, and each position is going to rotate through, from, from myself with the safeties, I'm not putting any tackling into my indie period because I know they have already gotten that on the practice plan. All right, we also had a route recognition period with just the defense before we went to seven on seven. So I, I knew our guys were going to get their route recognition during that period before we went to seven on seven. So I didn't feel like in my indie periods, I didn't feel like I had to talk about any of the route recognition stuff because I knew we were going to get that period. All right, and then on a day where maybe we don't have a route recognition period, well then pre-practice when I have my guys, maybe that is the time that I go over certain reads and our pattern matches or maybe some of our three deep stuff or our rotations in three deep. So I'm always going to look at what we are doing in the practice, what is on the plan, all right? And then when I work my individual period and my individual drills, I'm always gonna build it around everything else that's going on in the plan. So yesterday for us, I knew we had tackling circuits, okay? And I knew we had a route recognition period. So I know in other parts of the practice where I'm going to get route recognition and where I'm going to get all right, our tackling work. So what I focused on was transition, okay? Block destruction, man-to-man -man work, and then out of phase drills, right? So I started off with a transition period where we went tempo backpedal. And by tempo backpedal, what I mean is we start, we walk out. So we walk out for three, and then we speed up into our normal backpedal. So there's a change of pace there. So the walking out is simulating maybe us making a read, reading through quick game, reading through our pattern distribution, whatever it may be, our pattern match stuff. And then we speed it up into a full pedal. All right, and then I go to a full tempo drill where every whistle, they've got to change the pace. So they walk out, full speed, whistle blows, walk out, whistle blows, full speed, whistle blows, walk out. So I'm changing the tempo of the pedal. All right, then we go from a walk out, tempo, full speed, into a turn and run period. So turn and run to your left, turn and run uh, to your right, try and get a good transition, try and stay vertical on a line. All right, then we went to our tempoed out back pedal, so walk out, full speed, 45 degrees downhill to the left, 45 degrees downhill to the right, and then double moves, 45 downhill to the left with another whistle, put a foot in the ground, and get vertical as quick as you can, working on man turns into a player, uh, you know, double move stuff, right? So those are all the transition drills that I worked yesterday in my indie period because I knew we, weren't, we were not going to get transition stuff anywhere else in the practice plan. So I worked on tempo pedals, I worked on turn it and run, I worked on downhill, I worked on 45. So the next time that I go to do Indy, I'll probably work more on some straight downhill breaks, some post corner breaks going vertical over the top of the post, speed turn to the corner. So I'll change the transition drills. So I always want to get my guys working on all the different transitions we may need. So part of my indie period is always going to be those transition type drills, right? So that's how we started the first part of our indie yesterday. Well, then we went to a block destruction drill on a bag, all right? And I tied in a tracking the hip vice tackling drill, two-man vice drill, which is one of the out of the drills that we do. So I partnered up a block destruction drill with a tracking two-man vice drill. So we had two guys on bags, first, wick, first whistle, they've got to bench press lock the bag out. Second whistle, the rabbit chooses a direction. Off that direction, we've got to disengage off the bag. However, we choose to disengage off the bag. And now we've got to track the hip and vice the ball near foot, near shoulder. So the outside guy, if, if, if the camera's there and the ball's coming to me, I'm going to near foot, near shoulder with my left foot, left shoulder. All right, the guy that's on the other side needs to track the ball near foot, near shoulder with his right shoulder. Two players should be viced with... All right, very little air in between them so that that ball carrier can't split us. So I took a block destruction drill, and obviously this early in camp, all right, there's no body-on-body -body contact, so we're using bags. So we're using bags to work bench press, separate, shock and shed, however you want to look at it, separate, wrap it, get off the block, vice the ball, okay? And then from there what I did was I went to a partner man chase drill, and one of the ways we do it is we – put two defensive players facing me about two yards apart. I point in the direction. Whichever direction I point, that's the offensive player. The player that's a defensive player has to sprint to get in position 
all right, to make a play on the ball, there is no football in a drill. And the reason I don't use a football on a drill is I want the man guy to understand that if I'm the defensive player and we're going that direction, when I turn to become the defensive player, I am never going to look at the camera. All right, so that's why I don't use a ball early in a drill because we want to get guys in the, in, in the mindset of when I'm playing man, I'm breaking and driving a man, then I'll play the ball. So there is no ball in this drill. So if I'm a defensive player, as soon as I turn, my head goes right to the man I'm playing. I sprint to the man I'm playing, and when I get there, I secure a shoulder, and I get a hand up inside, all right, ready to make a play on a ball, but I cannot look back at the coach. Technically, right now, that was the camera. What do guys get in the habit of doing when they're playing man? I'm playing man, I turn and chase, and I look back there. They're throwing the football to the offensive player. They're not throwing the football from it to me. So I need to break and drive a man before I ever make a play on the ball. So we break and drive top shoulder, try to secure top shoulder, hand inside, and then eventually in that drill, all right, we'll work, um, we'll work it to where there's a ball in there and they can learn when they get to their man, now they can peek to see the ball. First thing we're always trying, especially early in camp, eliminate the habit of trying to look for the ball. Eliminate the habit of looking at the quarterback, right? So that's what we do in that drill, all right? And then we go to an out-of-phase drill. The out-of-phase drill is real simple, all right? One of the guys is about five yards up. One of the guys is on his backside hip, all right, on a whistle. The guy that's on offense is going about 75%. The guy that's on defense is full speed sprint, never look back for the ball, working out-of-phase, working to a point where when he gets there, eventually we will tie in ball disruption as well. Day one, no ball disruption, nothing. Out of phase, sprint to the hip. When you get there, one hand secures, one hand goes up inside, and we're building all those techniques in. So when you're building your individual periods, make sure it's more than just the standard drills you do every day. Make sure it's more than just this is what we do, EDDs. Find time in practice to do those things. So find time pre-practice if you can. Know if you got tackling circuits or if you got route rec or other things built in. Know that you don't need to do that in your indie. You can find other things that you can do. So we work transition, we work block destruction, tracking, and then we work some man-to-man -man type drills, right? So that's how I build my indie, how I'm always trying to get the most out of our practice plan. All right, so I hope this helps you guys. If spring ball started, good luck to you. Remember on May 11th, we will have John Walford. That's a week from this Thursday, John Walford, NFL quarterback, talking about quarterback play, quarterback preparation. If you're interested in that, email me, sting8740 at gmail.com. Hope you guys are doing well. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. Thanks for watching. See you next time.